subtitle today is to break camp and move on. So, break camp and move on. That's the subtitle of today. Short exhortation. Amen. Main scripture is from the book of Exodus, chapter 14. And I would love for us to read it. We're going to read from verse 1 to 15. Hallelujah. So this is how we're going to do it. Since they're going to be showing it on the screen. And uh, do we have different versions? Do we have no, a new living translation? Do we have that? No? We only have King James? All right, so I'm going to have to use King James. I'm going to read the first verse, and I want you to read the second one. Can we do that? And then we will just read the same, you know, version on the screen. Hallelujah. Can we, can we be on our feet as we read the word of God together? Let's be on our feet as we read the word of God together. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Hallelujah. So I want to do, think about that, because it says that, and the Lord said to Moses, speak to all, to the children of Israel. In New Living Translation, it says, and the Lord gave what? Instruction. So said is the same thing as what? Instruction. Amen. But I think one thing that I don't want us to just overlook quickly, it said that what they should do what? They should turn back. So don't just remember that. They should what? Turn back. Because it looks like they are taking a step backward. Correct? Because it's like they are marching forward. And the Lord said to them, there was an instruction and say, you know what, guess what? You are moving in this direction. And it looks like everything is glamorous and beautiful and glorious. But God said, said, said to them to do what? To turn back. But not only to turn, but they have to camp. So turn back. And pause. If you look at those two things, that's not what you were used to in life, correct? We're not used to turning back. We're not used to taking a step backward. And not only that, we're not used to t- turning back and taking a step backward, we're not used to what? Uh, to camping. Because we compare ourselves with each other and say, you know that, but I only just had a PhD, now I am still with my BSc. Amen. Did you see that there? Amen. Verse 3. For Pharaoh we say of the children of Israel that they had estranged in the land and, we the, and, and, and the wilderness had shut them in. Verse 4. Amen. Verse 5. And it was told that the king of Egypt that the people, the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and, and of his servant was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? Amen. Verse 7. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. But the Egyptians passed after them all of the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and took and look and overlook then and camping by the sea beside Fe Amora before Bel Zephon. It's not this the word that, that he it's not this the word that we did tell 
thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we, had, than we should die in the wilderness. Verse 13. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And verse 15, let's read it together. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cries unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. Thank you. I'm going to wash it away quickly. So the first thing is that in verse 1, the Bible says that say unto the children of Israel that they do what? Well, that they should return. They should turn back and camp. Amen. Hallelujah. The first thing that I want to, the first lesson that I want to talk about is instruction. Amen. The importance of all instruction. Friends, can I tell you something? If you live your life without instruction, your life will be miserable. Amen. If you live your life without war instruction, it is going to be war, be miserable. You have no priority. You have nothing to compare to because you don't have a specific instruction about your life. You don't have specific instruction about your children, specific instruction about your wife. If you live in this world, in this world, and you have no instruction and the purpose and the reason why you are here, your life will be miserable. Proverbs chapter 4 Verse 13. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. Proverbs 4, 13. If you did, you can read it quickly. Amen? It's war, it's that lie. Amen? I'm going to read from New Living Translation. It says, Proverbs chapter 4, verse, 20, verse 13. It says, Take hold of war. Of my instruction, don't let it well go. Guide them, for they are the key to life. Instructions are well are the key to life. And instruction comes from the word of God, from God speaking to us. All of us seated here this morning. One way or the other, you have received an instruction from God. Instruction about your career. Instruction about why you are here on earth. If you don't have, if you don't live your life by instruction, I'll repeat, your life will be war, be miserable. Your life depends on what? On instruction. When to move. When to advance. When to change job. When to look for better opportunity. It comes from what? From instruction. It comes from God speaking to you. From God speaking to you. So if God is not speaking to you and all that you're doing, all that you're waiting for, you're waiting for my instruction and you're living by my instruction, guess what is going to happen? Everything you're going to amount to is going to be based on my instruction. You have no specific goal, no specific guidance from God. Why are you here? Why are you in Columbus? Why are you in America? Why did God allow that door to be open unto you? Why did God make that way, make that way for you? Why did that visa process just happen? Why did they transfer you from another city to Columbus? What happened? 
Do you have, did you, have you received an instruction about that? Your life depends on what? On instruction. Because when you have instruction, you will now be comparing yourself to another person. Because you know where, why you are where you are today. When you have instruction, you will not be running after shadows. When you have instruction, you will look down on yourself. Because you know that all things work together for your good. When you have instruction, I know you are 40, but you have not married. But you know that God has told you that you will not be barren. That you know that God has told you that you will give back to generations. So you have that instruction with you. So when your friends and the pleasures and families are coming and say, oh, this, you are 39 now, you are 27, you are 50, you are saying that, I know what God had told me. And I know that my Redeemer will leave it. When you have instruction, even though you are looking for a job, but you know he said to you that he will make a way for you where there is no way. When you have instruction, you will not compare yourself with another person. For the Bible says, they that compare themselves with themselves are what? And not wise, they're the fool. Can you imagine? You're moving forward, but you don't have an instruction to do what? Stop. And then what? Go back. And they what? And they did. They what? They did. Hallelujah. They did. Number two. I want to, let me say this before we go to number two. I only have four lessons. Let me say this. Sometimes turning back is orchestrated by God. Sometimes what? Turning back is what? It's orchestrated by God. Like Pastor said last week. Sometimes being at that traffic light and at the stop sign is ordained by God. You're not wasting time. You know what? You're not wasting time. It's funny. I've seen this in marketplace. I've seen leaders, executives. That they don't have MBAs. They don't have MBAs. They don't have PhD. But it goes up the ladder. And I've seen somebody some some my, some people that some my friends they compare and say and say I have to have this MBA. I have to I have to and they just believe that once they have it they're going to be promoted. They're going to move up. I have to have this PhD. You don't have to if you're not being instructed to. Hello, can I repeat that? You don't what? Have to if you're not being what? Instructed to. Because he's the lifter of our heads. And he can promote anybody from nowhere. Hallelujah. But sometimes turning back is what? It's orchestrated by God and is designed by God. So friends, what you're going to now 
Have you thought about it? That is war. It's orchestrated war by God. It's not the devil like Pastor Mises said the other time. It's not the devil. What triumphant chapel is going to now. It's war orchestrated by God. Because it's like we're going 10,000 miles ahead and it's a pause, take a step back and camp. Just like we did last year. And we were camping somewhere. It's war, orchestrated war by God. That does not mean that we will not get to our promised land. It doesn't war mean that we will not get to our war, our promised land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This technology, amen. The thing is blanking after every 30 seconds. Amen. I, I, I said it that way. Pastor said I said it that way. It's not the thing, amen. Hallelujah. I will take care of that, amen. Number two, number two lesson because of our time. Number two. It is a war. It's a setup. Hello? It is a war. It is a war. It's set up. So your turning back is a war. It's a set up. Your camping there is a war. It's a set up. It is war. It's set up. Your affliction is a war. It's a set up. What you are going to today that you are not happy about is a war. It's a set up. God allowed that so that war, his name will be war, glorified. Look at what he said in verse 4. Look at what he said in verse 4. It says, I will hadn't the war, Pharaoh's heart, that he, that he shall war, follow after thee. And I will be honored upon what Pharaoh's and upon all his war, his host, that Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and war that did so. In New Living Translation, it says, I, and once again, I will have him feel that, and he will chase after you. I have planned this in order to display my glory. Amen. I have I've planned this. God said, what? Well, I've planned it to the world to display my glory. So that you will know that no man will glorify in his strength. So that you will know that I'm the one that takes somebody from nobody to become somebody. So that you will know that I'm the holy one that I took somebody that will come from, America, from Nigeria to America with only $200 in his pocket with no parent, no mother, no father, no siblings, nobody in America landing in this country and in just a couple of years later, I can make him prosper. That I will know that even people that went to Harvard, people that went to school higher than that person can still be under him. Even though he went to Kolokolo College. I am the only one that can do that. I am the only one that can do that. That my name may be glorified. That's the God that we serve. It's God that we serve. It's not easy. It's challenging. You don't have a job now. You don't have your paper with you. It looks like they call you illegal immigrant. You go and up and down. And you have to say, God, why do I have to go to this? God, why don't you see that family? Why is it that they got there so quickly and not me? Why is it that, that family got it together? Why is it that, that brother and that sister, they love each other? Why are we fighting in my own home all the time? Why are my children not listening to me? Why are they giving me trouble all the time? Why is my manager afflicting me every day? Why is my husband not leading? And you keep asking, am I the only one God? I prayed, I've done everything. And God has changed you. And I mean it today. I know. I had it so clearly in my spirit. That I allowed it. 
It is a war. It's a setup. So that the name of the Lord will be war. Come and say that again. Why is my spiritual? Why am I facing multiple spiritual attack? It's like every step, one step forward, it's like three or four step backward all the time. God, what is going on? You said, as you fast, I fasted. So as you pray, I prayed. I've done anything, everything I know in the books. Give, have given a number of times. Pay your tithe up. Oh, I've even done more than that. Sacrificial giving, come on, Lord. I've done that a number of times. Go and see one prophet. I've done that too. Because you said you honor the, the, the voice of your prophet. They prayed for me. I've been in camp several times. I've seen people with their children and they pray, Gio pray for them and they have their own children after they've been buying for years. I've done the same thing that they've said I, I should do. I follow their testimony. I follow the script. But things are not working out. I am still not there, Lord. It's like one step forward, two step back one. God's asking me to tell you this morning. It is a war. Come and say it. It is for the name of the Lord to be glorified. Psalm 23 verse 4. Psalm 23 verse 4. It looks like some of us, we are in Psalm 23 verse 4. It says, even though I walk, hello, come on, are you there? Are you in Psalm 23 verse 4? Are you there? Come on, look it up, look it up, look it up, look it up. And I want you to memorize that. He said, even though I walk, walk, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Come on, pause there for a second. Even though I do what? I walk through what? Through the valley of the shadow of death. Walking through the valley of the shadow of death is not easy. It is not easy to be picked on all the time. It is not easy to be looked down upon all the time. It is not easy. It is not easy to feel like I'll always come the last all the time. Assemblies are doing well. It's like everything is working out for them. It's not easy, my friends. Before they say yes, everything follows them. But just me. And I have to struggle about everything all the time. It's not easy. But the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. For thou are with me. For thy Lord and the world, the world that comfort me. The Lord and the staff me instruction. You know, when you see a shepherd, correct? And I've all the sheep following. They have the rod. And they use it to direct them. The rod and the staff, what? Friends, that's why I said, if you live your life without instruction, your life will be what? Miserable. The reason why I can walk to the valley of the shadow of death and still come out strong is because the rod and the staff, they do what? They comfort me. I have instruction. I know that my redeemer leave it. I know through it all that he will make a way for me where there is no way. I know that he has told me that I will be the head and not the tail. I know that he has told me that I will lend to men in generation. So you can speak better than me. You can dress better than me. You can have better education, better than me. I don't care about that. All I care about is this. I will lend to generation. You didn't get that. And I was literally talking about myself. You can have the best education. You can do whatever. All I know is what he has told me. That I will lend to generations. So if I haven't pay off my mortgage... I'm not learning, learning to walk to generations. So I'm not there yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no matter what I go to, 
Mr. Brother Fungay can help me with this. If I can just increase the... Amen. No matter what I go to, thy Lord and the star war, they comfort me. As long as we are on the side of God, the enemy of our soul will want to let us down. I want you to know this morning, friends. You were just what? Walking joy. You're doing what? You're walking joy. You will come and shine. Come and say better, amen. amen. You will come as come out glorious. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Fear cripples faith. Fear cripples what? Well, faith. You can't walk with God with what? Well, with fear. No. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16. Hebrews 11 verse 16. Says, but now. Verse 6, sorry. Verse 6. Hebrews 11 Verse 6. But what? But without faith, it is impossible. What? It is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must what? Must believe that's what? And that he is the what? Of those that diligently what? Seek him. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of that war, I will fear no evil. For thou war. How with me? But if you're living in fear all the time, you can't walk with God. Verse 10, look at verse 10 of the Exodus chapter 14. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, and forgive me, I have to read it in New Living because. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up. And what did they do? And panic when they saw the Egyptians overtaking war. Then they allowed fear to cripple it. Do you know why? Because they look at the mountain. They look at Pharaoh. They look and what their, their circumstances and they turn their heart away from God. They were. They turn their heart away from God. You cannot look at your situation. Please, you can't do that. All you need to do is the war to look unto God. You may not be there yet, but you are going to be there. So don't let the circumstances dictate what you're going to say. Because that's what they said. They look at their situation. They look at what is coming up. They look at the bills. They look at their age. They look at their degree. And by looking, by doing so, they define and they, they set limitation for themselves. Hallelujah. I was talking to you. One lady from my office, I, I, I usually get mentor a lot of people. Either these are the people that I mentor. African. African American that they're just coming into corporate work. Young people that their parents are African, but then you can they don't have accent, but you can see that they're just coming into like my you know, they're coming into corporate work. Asian Americans, anybody that is an immigrant, I, people send them my way. I just, oh, somebody said I should talk to you. Somebody said I should talk to you. Those are the kind of people that they send to me. Amen. Because I have a story. I have a war. Hello, I have a war. And my story, people come and listen. How did you do it? And I sat them down, and there's this lady. She's from Japan. She read law. 
when she was in Japan. She came here and went for her MBA or MPH. Very eloquent. I mean, speak fluently. No, I, I mean, she has, I mean, uh, she has accent, but speak well. But as we were talking, I was counseling her, and then just, you know, giving her ideas. She keeps saying that, oh, I don't want to do a walk that I have to talk a lot because of my accent. And she keeps telling, saying that to me. Every second, after every two, two minutes. I don't want to do a walk. I don't, I'm looking for another opportunity because that's why they asked me to come to me for an opportunity and things like that. Because I've been, two of my, you know, my tenure with a company, I've done five jobs within different, and I've been promoted several times. So they want, how did you do it? And then she said, but she keeps saying, I said, and I said, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. I said, you have law degree. I said, yes. I said, in Japan today, if you are still in Japan, wouldn't you be practicing law? Say, yes, I'll be practicing law. What will you be doing when you're practicing law? You'll be advocating for people, correct? You'll be standing in front of the judge and speaking. So why are you saying that you don't want to do that? Oh, it's because of my accent. I said, come on. See, that's the limitation you're setting for yourself. Because you've been talking to me and I've never brought it up. And I can hire you if I have a position for you. But don't tell me now. Don't set a limitation for yourself. And sometimes that's what we do. We set limitations for ourselves. I can't do this because of this. I can't do this because of this. Like they told me that when you're an accountant in America, it's only for the white people because it requires speaking. It requires, it's, a, it's a professional service. And I know that God has told me that I'm going to hit with my accounting. So they asked me to go and do nothing. And I know that when I all see my own blood, I will pass out. <laughs> so why would I follow them? Because that's what they told me when I first came to this country. Because it set that limitation. So accounting requires speaking. Accounting requires, you know, talking to clients. And I don't think you have all of those. That's what they told me. I'm telling you today. What are the limitations that you're setting for yourself? Just because you're looking at your wall, at your situation, at your mountain. Amen? Because that's what they did, looked. And they set limitation for themselves. Amen? Let me finish with this. God is going to fight for you. God is what? But all you need is grace to trust him. To trust what he's saying. He's the one that asks you to do what to turn back. He's the one that asks you to do what to camp. And he's also the one, even though you don't know, that is what hardened the heart of Pharaoh because he wants to display his glory. What you don't know is that you don't know that he has the, is the one hardened the heart of what? Of Pharaoh. But at least you know something that when you left Egypt, he's taking you to a war, to a promised land. He's not going to hold back on his war. So if he had told you something, he will bring it to pass. Don't look at the Pharaoh coming. Don't look at your circumstances. And above all, get rid of those, all those limitations that you have set for yourself. And keep your eye on him. And the last point is this. Break camp and move on. Say, when you say break camp and move on. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. The 
Bible says that you have stayed well. You what? You stay long on this wall, on this mountain. You've been on this mountain too long. New Living Translation said, break camp and wall and move on. God is asking us. We've stayed in our camp. We've turned back. But now is the time to do what? To move on. Now is the time to do what? Now is the time to do what? Just like he said to them in verse 15. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore quiet unto, unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they will, that they go forward. The declaration for triumphant chapel is this. We are well, we're moving out. The instruction is well, we're well, we're moving out. He asks us to camp. He asks us to turn back, but he's asking us to do what? To move on. So let's forget about the camping now. Stop talking about the camping now. And the worst thing you can do is to talk about Egypt. The worst thing you can do is to make negative declaration because that's what they did. In verse 13, in verse 12, verse 11, they were making negative war declaration. Moses, why, did you, why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? We have told you this. Why didn't you do that? And what did Moses do in, in, verse, in, in verse 13? And he said unto them, he said, well, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord for which he will show unto you today. For the Egyptians whom you, see, you have seen today, you shall see them again no more in Jesus' name. That's what Moses did. He, he made a declaration. He made a positive declaration. Stand still. Fear not. And the most important thing, we are all moving forward. God is asking us to all go forward. Go forward in your career. Go forward in, in, in your ministry. Go forward in your family. God is asking us to do all. Go forward. Don't talk about the limitation. Don't talk about how weak you are. Don't talk about how terrible you are. Speak and make declaration on the wall and move forward. For the Egyptians that you see today, you will see then no more. For the joblessness that you see today, you will see it no more. No matter whatever name that they are calling you today, you will see then no more. Let's be on our affair. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Remember the first lesson? Instruction is what is important. If you don't follow instruction, your life will be what? Miserable. The second lesson, it is just a war. It's just a setup for the name of God to be glorified. Doesn't matter how difficult, how challenging. It may not be planning out. It may not be working out the way you have planned it. But it's just a wall. It's set up. The reason why you are turning back, the reason why it looks like you are taking two steps backward, it is just a wall. It's set up. Please don't compare yourself with anybody else. It's just a setup. It's just a setup. And you can now walk in war in fear. Because fear war, war, cripples faith. If you want to walk with God, you got to be a woman, a man of faith. And finally, you have to break camp 
and move on. You cannot continue to stay in that camp. And forget about your experiences in the camp. Forget about how difficult it was when you were in the camp. Focus on the Canaan land. Focus on the promised land. Because God is saying to all, move forward. For the Egyptians that you see today, you should see them no more. Give it up to him. Give it up to him. And give it up to him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Give it up to him. Give it up to him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Declare that you are moving forward. Come and make declaration that you are moving forward. Make declaration that you are moving forward. In your career, in your ministry, in your family that you are moving forward. In the life of your children that you are moving forward. In the life of your family that you are moving forward. Come and make declaration. Concerning your job, you are moving forward. You are moving forward. You are the head and not the tail. You are moving forward. You have everything that it takes to be a leader. You are moving forward. Come and make declaration about Triumphant Chapel. Triumphant Chapel is moving forward. We will not talk about our camping experience. We will not talk about the fact that we took some step backward. But as far as we are concerned, we are going to focus on the fact that we are moving forward. We're moving forward. It doesn't matter how many steps that we've taken backward. What we know now is that God has asked us to move forward. To move on. And break the camp. Come and make declaration. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Say with me. Say in Jesus name. Say in the name of Jesus. Come and say it very say in the name of Jesus. Say, I am moving forward. With all confidence. Say, I'm moving forward. Say, I am moving forward. The Lord is with me. The Lord will fight my battle. The Lord is fighting my battle. The Lord is fighting my battle. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Very soon, we will get to our Canaan land. Very, very soon, we are so close. For the Red Sea that is in front of us, going to be parted. We will walk on the dry ground. For the people who have been looking down on us. They thought they got us. Because we took some step backward. And we camped somewhere. They thought that was our hand. Very soon. They will see the glory of God. Been displayed in our life, been displayed in Triumphant Chapel, been displayed in this ministry, they will see the glory of God. They will see us on the other side of the river, rejoicing, dancing, clapping, shouting, because our God has done it. So shall it be. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. God bless you.